come to item six, public input, and just to advise councillors, um, four requests have been received. Uh, two have been declined uh, on the basis uh, that the matter has a separate consultation process and also on the basis that the request did not meet the working day time frame for the request and that the subject matter is the responsibility of the Environment and Community Committee. But we have approved two requests and I'll, I'll uh, uh, indicate both of those requests now because they're on similar topics. Uh, the first uh, from the Honourable John Tamahiri as the Chief Executive of the National Urban Māori Authority on social and affordable housing. And the second from uh, Dominic Foote, the General Manager in, uh, of Operations from the New Zealand Housing Foundation. So the first request received was from, uh, from the Honourable John Tamahiri. So if I can ask John to come forward. And uh, while he's doing that, could I acknowledge the large contingent from the Waipareira uh, Trust, and particularly our Komatua and Kuia. Uh, you're very welcome here today. Thank you for participating in our proceedings. Um, John, uh, you've got uh, five minutes, which, which you can uh, share as you see fit, and then we'll have questions. <laughs> あ、コロタタ。コロタタ。あ、キトタラ、キフチュラニチア、チネミヒアチ。エザラガチラロンノイ。あ、シッコブン。エザラガチラ、あ、モイマイ、モイマイ、あ、モイガロ。あ、コン
Thank you, Bill. Um, can you get this second for me there? Listen, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll just get uh, directly into, into the slideshow. Um, all of the evidence is uh, out, and it comes from your own policy groups. So it's quite clear that we're 13,000 houses minimum down uh, on our ability to build, and we're only building half of that at the moment. Uh, Waipareta is involved, as you uh, are aware, in a number of developments, uh, but we will only be involved as a developer in social housing and or affordable housing. The problem we've got with uh, Panuku is, and this is the last etiquette and protocol that I can have, is come to the um, governing board to overturn what I consider to be a discriminatory and egregious policy that has been adopted by one of your council-controlled organisations. Uh, and, and the point that I'm going to make very quickly, and I'll leave the stack with you, is uh, on the course of a, of a negotiation with Panuku, uh, it came to our attention that uh, a social cap was being applied uh, across ratepayer lands. Uh, in and of itself, that might not be a bad policy. But when we've asked for disclosure on the rationalisation of that policy that rates poor people out of ratepayer land and access to housing, when we have to build the supply side of it, and quite immediately, uh, we got a legal opinion that showed it was a breach of the Human Rights Act. We placed that opinion before Panuka and asked them to provide us with their challenging brief, which is standard business commercial practice. The answer from this arrogant outfit is get lost. We then petitioned a board member, same answer. We then met with the mayor and others provided that four weeks ago, that legal opinion, to say, you, you cannot get us to sign a development agreement if you're on notice that it's breach of the law. And, and why, why do we have to come down here and, and uh, speech, speak such strong terms against one another when just civil, just civil treatment of citizens of the city is required? So, so, so quite clearly, um, Okay, so, so quite clearly, I'll just flick through this. Here's the numbers. They're outrageous. There's the average yearly rent in Auckland, $520, and that's net per week. Average income of Auckland is $58,000. <coughs> Councillor Darby will know quite clearly, you, you ain't going to get nowhere. This city has to support central government's desire to build social houses, and you sit on some of the most largest and strategic parcels of that land in the city. <clears throat> There's the, the affordability. You know, 60% of Pacific Islanders have to rent. 55% of Māori have to rent solely because of their incomes. Now, what are we dealing with? Panuka, a billion dollar operating unit of the council. I reiterate its strategic land holdings. You know, over the last 10 years, it's delivered the worst performance of any like property company on return on investment to ratepayers. That's a fact. And now it goes and caps housing on land that disaffects and prejudices our elderly. That's why Grey Power's here. Not political, just on the elderly's rights. Beneficiaries and low-income earners, under $80,000. And if the average income's 59, you've just rated a heap of Aucklanders out of an ability to get on a reasonable housing uh, um, journey. Let's look at the, let's look at, uh, the uh, development that we're working on uh, up close and personal. Old Papatoitui, 11% social housing. Mangere is 45%. In a conversation uh, with you, Mr. Mayor, you indicated you grew up in Papatoitui and you don't want another Mangere, another Otara. They wouldn't see it that way. They don't look at Mangere and Otara as a slum. Now let's have a look at the rich and how <clears throat> they get rated. Or uh, where's your social cap on the rich? There's 63 prime hectares sitting in the middle of Rimueta. Why don't we put social houses there? And if you want a mixed community, put the poor in a rich area rather than rate the poor out of the poor areas. So, so th that's our joint venture. That's the uh, units we've built. That's our background. So we're appealing to this full council committee as a governing board to retake the city. 
seize back control of it from these people. Look, even Auckland Transport comes out with a 30k in the CBD. Where the hell did that come from? It's just you've got you're just out of control here. So we're looking at ethics and values, okay? and we've we've gone through every etiquette. We've knocked on every door, and, and this is the final door today before we have to litigate, and our people have to spend money to fight the ratepayer checkbook. That's, that's the arrogance of it. We've got a, you grind, they grind people down. So, so um, basically, this is the punchline. We were asked to keep quiet over this breach of the law because most developers do. They just want the money. We were asked not to contest this prejudice and discrimination. This, these legal opinions and everything have been put before you. Now, this governing board is either receiving filtered information or, or it has been kept in the dark. Now, you cannot sit around this board table and accept notice that your policy is illegal and not get some uh, court to actually give you a stare on it. And all we wanted was, by consent, a declaratory judgment. Keep it. We didn't need the, the press, but this is what you've got to do. And I've got to say to all, all the citizens in this city, stand up. If we look the other way, you just you, you become Mexico City, not Auckland City. And so there are the three um, there are the three issues we want sorted. Take back control of the city. And it's you, you, politically accountable that set social caps. Not some bureaucrat down the road here, overpaid, underperforming. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm wanting to put on the um, minute that I'd like speaking space on March 29, where I come back and thank you very much for overturning this egregious policy. Uh, thank, thank you for that contribution. We gave you twice as long as uh, I'm uh, supposed to give you. Um, just before we go to questions from councillors, um, it was my intention after public input just to acknowledge the passing of the late Acid Corbin. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, speaking at his funeral and was there together with councillors uh, Cooper and Hulse. But to acknowledge a, a man, the first New Zealand-born grandson uh, of migrants from Lebanon that set up our first commercial vineyard in New Zealand, among other things, at Mount Lebanon. Uh, but Acid served... Uh, for 57 years in public life, he was 30 years the uh, mayor, uh, a councillor or mayor of Henderson and the first mayor of Waitakere City and he served on numerous other uh, public and community boards. So I, I think given um, his passing, it, it may be appropriate if we just, uh, if we just take a minute uh, to stand in, in memory of the late Acid Corbin. Thank you very much. Um, we now have the opportunity for councillors to ask uh, questions, so I'm happy to receive calls from, from councillors. Councillor Sayer, I'll see you uh, first. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor, and uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your presentation. Um, I guess what you've done uh, for myself and probably a number of the councillors is alert us to this situation. Uh, I wasn't aware of it, so thank you for doing that. You've mentioned that uh, uh, you've sought you've sought um, some legal advice, and uh, I understand you're suggesting that we should uh, do the same. Um, is that is that correct? Oh, I have every reason to believe you already have, mm -hmm. but you're not being told about it. Right. Uh, the mayor's office has fully been briefed on this. So has uh, Panuku uh, over the last four months. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I guess, I guess just as a reflection on that, it might be appropriate, um, Your Worship, if something might be included by yourself in the, uh, uh, in the, in the uh, minutes there along those lines, if we should be getting some sort of report back to us, mm -hmm. Your Worship. 
happy to organise that. Thank you. Right, uh, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, John and Bill, for your uh, presentations here today. Um, there's a substantive matter of uh, the um, the degree and provision of social housing. However, I, I, you mentioned um, the culture of the organisation you've been dealing with, John, that which in interests me. Are you are you aware that there are numbers of other uh, community groups and organisations have had to um, solicit legal advice in respect of dealings with uh, Panuku? Uh, they're legendary for their arrogance um, and they're legendary for deals falling over because of that arrogance. A lot of people, though, are intimidated by the ratepayer checkbook and they're intimidated by being uh, locked out of any opportunity to work on strategic parcels of land to get different communities away. I'm, I'm here because they're locking up Henderson as well. <clears throat> so it's just not Papa Toy Toy. It's not just South Auckland. This outfit's all over the place. So just just very quick uh, follow-up. So uh, uh, over and above the constraints that the, our last speaker talked about, you're actually referring to something that, that, that goes to the, the actual um, culture of the organisation. I'm, I'm saying to you that uh, if you don't believe their conduct uh, supported by the Mayor's Office is unethical, uh, at the very least, once you're on notice that there is a breach of the law and uh, you're, you're told to sign a deed of agreement and uh, not raise that issue, uh, th there, there is something seriously corrupt about that conduct. They need to be sorted out. I, 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 I think we should be careful yeah. here not to <coughs> accuse officials that I think every member around this table would accept as having integrity of being corrupt. I think that's inappropriate, and I think you should withdraw that or produce evidence for your statement. Oh, no, I won't be withdrawing it, Mr Mayor. Okay. Well, I, uh, no, 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 because it's actually a value judgment that you should make. Yeah, well, I, I just want to separate myself, and other councillors may wish to do likewise, that uh, I do not believe that our officials are corrupt, and I think that that okay. statement is unfortunate and defamatory. But we now have uh, further questions. Uh, Councillor Chris Darby. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, tēnā John. Um, um, and just look at the outset, if I can just say the... Um, part of this uh, question of yours uh, about the social housing mix um, that has come to me and the Mayor and we've asked Panuku to come to us in a planning committee workshop, I think it's uh, late October, for the planning committee, governing body that is, to consider the social housing mix policy and ultimately it will be uh, this group that decides on that policy um, and will be considering that soon. So just in terms of your interest, it dates back quite a way. It, it goes back uh, over a year, doesn't it? Yep. August, um, August 17 or something like yep. that. Did you not have an earlier agreement where you agreed with a social housing mix in your development of of 30%? How did you, if so, how did you arrive at that then? What was your empirical evidence that you based that initial decision on? But I understand that since then you've sought a higher proportion. And again, uh, on what empirical evidence did you base that change on? Is it research undertaken in New Zealand or international? Um, because I think you've, yep. you've arrived at a request for 70% social housing overall and 100% in one particular block. So how does that give a mix of tenures where a lot of the uh, research around the world says you really do need a mix of social, ideally a social affordable market? So I'm just wondering, John, how you uh, navigated this course and how things change from your perspective? Well, you know, when you get into social engineering, you've got to have uh, a, a very good information bank upon which uh, people like you make decisions. I've never seen one, right? So basically you're making all the rules and have all the ratepayer <coughs> resources to work out the answer to the questions you've just asked. Uh, can I just uh, explore one issue with you? Uh, if we have 30%, 37%, 50% social housing, doesn't matter what the percentage is, uh, do you seriously think that the rest of those 72 units uh, will be bought as affordable housing? They'll be bought by speculators, and guess who they're going to put in it? Tenants, like our people, to pay market rents, and guess who subsidises the market rent? Right now, the taxpayer is paying over $2 billion 
to speculators in terms of the market difference of what they can pay and the rate differential, the rent differential. So you, you can't sit here around here and say, these are the type of people that are going to go into that development. What you can say is, is that X will go to the private market. You cannot say that that particular development will not have uh, a 80 per cent social housing profile in terms of its people, particularly in Papa Toy Toy. And so you've got to look at uh, horses for courses. Of course, if you're going to do um, a development in Remuera on Remuera Golf Course, which we would like to see, you can then have an, a, a more enlightened conversation because you're surrounded by a lot of rich folk. But you can't, you just can't use ratepayer land to actually rate your uh, poorer ratepayers earning eighty thousand dollars or less out of the city. You've got, a, you've got an obligation here, and, and therefore the policy that you're going to apply is going to have to be well considered because it, it will be discriminatory. So look, just to follow up on that, and I appreciate that, they're really good points, and uh, we will be asking Panuku to bring that empirical evidence to the Planning Committee workshop to show us how they arrived at their recommendations. I guess my, my, I'm posing the same question to you because you are suggesting that they are wrong and you are right in terms of the housing mix. And I'm just fairly asking you, John, where is your empirical evidence I did on not, which no, you no, no, based no, your decision? Okay, I'll, I'll give you some numbers soon. Uh, but don't worry about the empirical evidence. Uh, your Panuku has applied the social housing cap. It, it hasn't got any evidence. So on, on what evidence did this council allow this runaway um, organisation to apply a cap in the first place? They're not sociologists. They're not social workers. They're, they're, I don't know what they are, really, but the point is, is they do not uh, and cannot provide the evidence. And that's one of the reasons uh, why the legal opinion is so strong in regard to discrimination against elderly, against people earning under $80,000 and against beneficiaries. And so we all, we all would like a Nirvana, but you, me, and people of our age like the mayor, we all come out of state housing areas. I, 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 was, I was in Point Chef. It doesn't look like a state housing area now, and Mount Albert. That's why the rugby league clubs were so strong there. So look, the point I'm just trying to say to you is if you know your communities, you'll know that we all got a shot, okay? And I think that the poor in this city deserve a shot. That's all I'm here for. That's my empirical evidence. They're under house. They're in garages. And you, so you stand by uh, your request for a 100% single tenure of the apartment development, Block C and 7%? No, 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 no. Well, we, we, we can live with 30% or 37% if it's legal. You've got, you've, got to, you've got to listen very carefully to the presentation that I put before you. I shouldn't be here. If Panuku had just exchanged legal briefs, if they had accepted that we, we should go for a declaratory judgment by consent, I wouldn't be wasting your time or our people's time. I wouldn't be wasting money on, in eight weeks' time, if this, if this governing board doesn't overturn this policy, regardless of what you bring in, uh, we're going to court to test it ourselves. Okay, so you've got eight you. weeks. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Collins. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and I'm happy to move uh, the vote of uh, thanks uh, at the completion Second. of this discussion. Uh, uh, kia ora matua, uh, tēnā kōrua. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Just uh, in leading up to my question, I was chair of the Ōtara Papa Toi Toi local board at the time we discussed the development, one of the developments that you're referring to, and I might say that it was a concern of the board at the time that they felt that they were being pushed into a corner for this type of mix, uh, because obviously, uh, granted the backgrounds we all had, mm. uh, we wanted to see an increase in state and social <coughs> housing uh, provision. <coughs> I just two questions. Do, would you be willing to make your legal uh, opinion that you've collected from uh, yourselves available to those of us who haven't seen that legal opinion, so that I can, because I haven't got a copy of. Look, it. I think it's, I, I think that that you've been in the dark this long, after Panuku has had this legal opinion for over four months, is a disgrace. You're supposed to be here controlling the city and making all the right decisions, and you haven't been alerted to the fact that council policy could be in breach of the Human Rights Act. It's just, this just that's not on. That's the C word again. <coughs> Thank you. And my, my second question, uh, and uh, having been someone who grew up in Ōtara, on Preston Road in a state house for about 20 years, I'm interested in uh, just a bit more of your exploration around how you would, how you believe 
that a 70% or 100% provision of social state housing and the development, well, would it be social housing or affordable <coughs> housing? Actually, I'm interested in the notion of affordable as well. Uh, but how that will serve the community, granted it's a community that uh, is resilient, granted their challenges at the moment. Yeah, well, look, I don't have uh, all of the answers, but what I will say to you is, is that the housing shortage is so bad and so poor in Auckland, uh, we, we've got a human tidal wave uh, washing through, and uh, they're in uh, grave difficulty. It's not for me to determine where poor people should live. It is for the state and the ratepayer to ensure that all citizens have a warm house and shelter and, and go to a, 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 to a home that is as comfortable as what you all live in. That, that's just a basic Kiwi right. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Holtz. Mm. Mm. Kia ora, kia ora. Um, John and um, Bill. I, the, the debate has shifted somewhat, so my questions have morphed a bit. I am trying to get clear on whether today we're actually talking about a genuine hope to set up a more just way of housing our Aucklanders or if this is a legal battle between two kind of giant organisations and I can't quite work out. So I'll, I'll just stick back with the people where my interest lies. What, what I'm trying to get clear on is as we move through the debate and discussion on the unitary plan, and I'm probably the only councillor actually around this table who attended I think about 120 meetings as we moved around the region talking about the unitary plan as a way of dealing to affordable housing by looking at increasing density, lowering the footprint of housing, looking at mixed housing tenure. And we were met with, and Bill will attest to this, a fairly stony-faced group of people. There is a question in here, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Aucklanders were not universally accepting of high density, mixed tenure, and different housing typologies. We managed to get that through, particularly I think your area, Bill, were not exactly supportive of the idea. And I think when the Ngāti Whātua land was up for mention, I think there was a, a <coughs> universal sort of deep opposition. intake of breath and, and opposition to the fact that, and I quote, as the media put it, those people might be living here. So, you know, we're, we're trying to do, and I'll channel Acid Corbin here, sometimes politics is the art of the possible, and it's not get too carried away with words like corruption. This is actually about what we can land. So there's two questions I've got. I don't necessarily see that this is a hard and fast rule. I think the 30-30-30 rule normally applies. It is international best practice. It's certainly supported by the Auckland Community Housing Providers Network. It's supported by Housing First, LifeWise, City Mission. It's well understood. So, you know, there's a huge amount of information in that. My question is, when you look at what people ask for, blind tenure is pretty important to a lot of people. They don't want to stick out <coughs> like a sore thumb and be unwanted in their communities. So if we do have 100% provision of social housing in an area, what are the plans for the retention of support for those communities? Who will pay? Has the discussion in old papatoitoi or in other areas has that discussion been had with government about who will pay and who might the provider be for those wraparound services? Look, um, the problem that you have is it doesn't matter what cap you put on. Uh, what matters is what the final settlement uh, demographic will look like. And I've made that point to Councillor Darby previously. So you've got no control. Uh, you, you, can be social, you can be a great social engineer and want a 30-30-30 split. And God bless you, that ain't going to happen, right? Uh, I'll, put, I'll put your house on it. So um, the, 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 that's, that's your first problem. Your second problem, because that's the way the market is at the moment, right? So, so, and, and, we've got, and because we've got such a failing tail that needs to be fixed, uh, that's why you, you'll have a perverse result, um, as I've indicated to Councillor Darby. The, I've got no problem with the 30, 50 or whatever percentage and we need it rationalised in the communities upon which some bureaucrat visits that dictate. That's all we're asking for here. Some line of sight, some visibility. Where's the evidence? Who's, you know, like, like if, you, if you were to put that in Henderson, right, 50% uh, social housing is not a problem in Hendo because we've got, we've got good wraparound services. So that's another discussion. 
but you've got to look at each hood in its own merits. So, Mr. Mayor, hence my confusion. That's exactly what we're attempting to do. And I think we are, in a strange way, talking past each other. The Auckland Council, like no other council, has endeavoured to grapple with the affordable housing <coughs> and the homeless issue, the people living in cars. You know, you, Linda, and I are from West Auckland. We know who's living in garages. We know who's living in cars, and we know where those places are. This is not an issue we take lightly. So this council, and through the notice of motion that we're going to be discussing, we are absolutely committed to affordable housing and a socially just outcome for our community. However, battling over sort of semantics and throwing words like corruption around, Mr. Ma, I think it's getting us nowhere. So my second question is, if we agree with each other that we want to find the best mix for communities, rather than battling communities head on, we're not going to get 100% housing, social housing landing in Devonport. We will get it in Hendo because Hendo is a good place and that's where most of us come from, for, from those kind of backgrounds. Why are we arguing with each other on some sort of trumped up piece of legal nonsense when we should actually be sitting around the table saying how do we make this work in a way that is going to keep us out of the courts, spend money on actually getting housing built and getting our babies out of living in cars. That's my question to you. Yeah, well, that was a great speech in normalising <laughs> the abnormal. <laughs> Mr. Right? Chair, no, Mr. Chair, so, can I? So, I so, just, you know, yeah, if that's it, it vintage Tamahiri. Take the person, is, don't answer No, no, no it is abnormal. Can you just answer my question? Sorry, or, order. Can I, can I just, there's been a question given, yeah. and I think we should answer now it. listen to yeah. the answer. Yeah, well, you, well, well address the question, I've, I've just tried to, because this is taking quite some time, Mr. Mayor, but I've just tried to answer the question. If, if you normalise abnormal conduct, you then make it the status quo. And then everybody believes that's the way we should conduct ourselves. There's no such thing as a trumped up legal opinion, Councillor Hulse. No such thing. You've had it uh, for two months nearly, right? You did nothing. So all I'm just trying to say to you is I'm here now because I've got to talk to the <coughs> board, the governing board, uh, as a committee of the full board of the city. Uh, so going to you with that legal opinion, that went nowhere. And I, I regret that. And it's not trumped up because if it was trumped up, this city, with all its money and all its lawyers and all its QCs, would have had an alternative opinion to hand over to us. And I wouldn't have been here if it was such a compelling piece of an opinion. I wouldn't be here. I guess the court will determine that in the end. Uh, oh. Councillor Fletcher. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Um, I've got three quick questions, and I, I really want to bring them back to process rather than the specific issue that you have brought before yep. us. Firstly, I want to know, John, um, your view on CCOs, and then secondly, whether you think that the legal advice, currently much of it for council is in-house, uh, and whether you think that's a good thing. Um, and just thirdly, in terms of process, how we might better ensure transparency. Well, your CCOs, is, I, I think you've lost control of them. Uh, when I sat here for six years on uh, finance and performance with you, uh, the quality of the documentation coming from them was marginal, I thought, at best. And regretfully, uh, they are the judge, jury and executioner as, as your advisor. And so this, 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 this governing board is only as good as what they're going to serve you up. And that's why I think a bunch of information has been filtered uh, at best. At best, filtered, if, uh, at worst, misleading. And, that, and you heard that, this, this bloke that was here for um, the Winyard quarter, he, he just, it's just another cut by 100 pieces. So you've got to re-seize control here. The, the problem also with uh, some of your board members on uh, different boards are they're too heavily wired. If you look at Panuku, how can your own, how can our own, you owners, how can they possibly take you to court? You want to you get them into a room. Go and hire a motel somewhere. The reality is, is, is that uh, that arrogance uh, uh, and a board, and the director on that board is a 17-year partner of Russell McVeigh, and they use Russell McVeigh. It's too, it's, there's too many, I'm not joining the dots here, I'm saying there are dots, mm -hmm. and that is the concern. That's true. Thank you. That's uh, true. Further questions, Councillor? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. 
Um, can, I, can I finish up just with a couple of questions, John, and it might be helpful to councillors if we have a better understanding of Waipareira's role in this. Uh, so if I outline it, can you correct me if I'm wrong? The proposal was that you would buy the land off Panuku. You would then commission builders to build the buildings. And then I understand that you would on-sell the, uh, the, the apartments that have been built to, uh, to Housing New Zealand, and there was a conditional agreement that they would buy them off you. So it, it's for you a commercial transaction that we're talking about here? Um, initially, uh, we're in the not-for-profit sector, but we're not in the make-for-loss sector. So what we do is, is, of course, we're commercial, because that's how we fund our homeless programs. Okay, so, so you're acting as a developer here. That, there's nothing wrong yep. with that. that. I'm not being critical of that. But, you know, the way you've presented today suggests that <coughs> if we don't go with two-thirds social housing, there'll be a loss of social housing. That's, that's your argument? No, my argument is I don't understand your social engineering cap oh, well, in well, the we, first we, place. We can, we can come to that. But yeah. can I, the, the impression that I got from, from your public comments was that we're either for social housing or we're against it. But I've talked to the Minister and there is a budget for about 1,000 social houses to be built by Housing Corporation of uh, Housing New Zealand each year. Now, if they decide because, uh, or, or if, uh, if, if this council in Panuku decides that we really like the concept of an inclusive community, you know, people of different tenures, different income levels, different social groupings, and we only build 24 social houses on this site, rather than the 48 that you want, that's not a loss of 24 houses, is it? Because Housing New Zealand has a set budget and they'll simply build those social houses elsewhere. Yeah. So the argument is not about whether we need more social housing or not. We do, and we've been advocating strongly for it, but it's whether we have more on this site as against those houses being pepper-potted around other sites. Is, is that correct? Yeah, we'll just, ju we'll just justify your percentages. There's got, to be, there's got to be a rationalisation. That's all this argument's about. Okay, okay. but, well, well maybe, um, and we, we're getting another presentation on this, but um, you and I, I think, both have respect for our community housing providers. They do a great job in social and affordable housing. In very difficult circumstances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ma made more difficult by this policy. Uh, well, I think they'll differ yeah. on that. <coughs> their argument to us, and, and, I, and, I, and I spoke at, uh, at their meeting a couple of weeks ago, long before this, this came out as a public issue, they said they're very much in favour of an inclusive policy <coughs> that sees a percentage of the housing going to social housing, a percentage going to Kiwi Build, because there are all those families out there like yours and mine that started off without much money, right. but we wanted a start in life, and we want the nurses, you know, and the, and the, the teachers and the fitters and the turners uh, that can't afford a house on the market to have access to affordable housing. And rather than speculate, as my understanding from Panuku is that a third of these would be Kiwi-built houses designed specifically for that demographic that are desperate for the Kiwi dream of their own home and giving them a chance, and this would be a good place to do that. Why is that social engineering? I th would have thought that's something that you would applaud. Well, this is what I applaud. Uh, the Minister of Housing that you'll talk with uh, has got uh, a group called Housing New Zealand. Their purchasing officers are willing to, in West Auckland and in South Auckland, build a lot more and buy a lot more social houses. Right? And so, so you've got a central government agency that's got the checkbook to buy these things, and then you've got a ratepayer agency that says we've got a social engineering policy that trumps social housing in these areas. That's, the, that's as simple as that. The, the thing I find amusing, I guess, is social engineering was always an accusation by the right wing against the left wing for trying to get good social outcomes. And I think that's what Housing New Zealand, in their com communication to me, they say they like the concept of a third, a third, a third. But anyway, look, thank you very much for your presentation today. It's been moved. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I've since had further questions, so uh, let's, uh, let, let's go to the other questions. Uh, Councillor Josephine Bartley. Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and through you. Thank you for your, your presentations. Um, yeah, I've never heard you speak before, so this was really interesting. Um, I, I looked up your legal opinion on the media um, site. I, I haven't received it in my inbox, so I just wanted to know, does that 
Uh, do, are you saying that applies to um, not just ratepayer land, but also taxpayer land, like a public land? And are you also saying that in terms of public land, that that should just be used for social housing? Because I'm aware of, and we're all aware of, private developments that have no social housing in them. So it seems like it's one rule for one and yeah. not the other. So if we've got public land, maybe that should just be used for, for social housing then. Public land, ratepayers' land yeah. and Crown land are the only lands that poor people can have a say in. Uh, of course private developers must and do their own uh, designs and developments. Uh, and of course they can have social caps if they want it because they're private sector. This, this table uh, is accountable to the ratepayers and the citizens and we can then have a say in public estate. That's, what this, that's why you guys are all here. And that's why I'm here having this conversation with you. Mm. Okay, so, so private developers, got good on them, and God bless them for making a quit and going out and doing it. Some of those private developers will also provide social housing. No doubt about that. Can I just ask one more Thank question, you. Um, So what, what is your response? Because, you know, I grew up in Mangere, but I'm living in Tamaki, and we've got the Tamaki Regeneration Project happening there. Now, their response to us about these, cat, or these one third, one third, was because the market houses will help them fund mm. to build more social housing. Mm. In reality, we have a lot of million dollar properties that our community that lives there can't afford to live in. Mm. So what is your response when they say it's well, well, about economics? Well, Tamaki Regeneration <laughs> is another stroke of injustice because it decanted communities uh, that were embedded and had been there for generations. It, uh, when you decant a community, uh, international experience shows that, because we haven't done large numbers of that until this, uh, shows that 85% of people cannot and do not return as soon as you've decanted them. So what you've done is, is that you've just wiped out uh, generations of that neighbourhood and uh, as you get the creep from Kohe Maramara uh, and St John's across, um, what, what you've done then is just gentrified GI and kicked everybody out in a nice way. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Cashmore. Thanks, Mr Mayor. JT and Bill, thanks for your presentation. I actually don't think we're disagreeing with one another too much. This is about provision of housing. And this is a 25-year problem. This hasn't just arrived in the past six years. This has been building for a long, long time. And the solution, John and Bill, and I'd like your opinion on this, is, is, is the social side, so that third, a third, a third, third for social, a third affordable, a third for mixed, the building a community is probably the most important part of it, but also to enable the financial structure to actually use that as a catalyst to do more of it. So whether you have 100% or 30% in any one development is a, is a mute point. The point is the number of actual social houses being delivered over numerous developments in a year, and if it's 1,000 or 1,500, that's the key aim for both of us, is it not? Yep. So I think we had, we have, we're not in disagreement at all here, Mr Mayor. We are saying the same thing. It is not about a cap, it is about delivering more houses in each different development and through an intensified model. So I think we're actually on a similar page. That's the point. So you're nodding, so you're agreeing with, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and last question is Councillor Clay. Yeah, thank you, Bill, and uh, thank you, John. Um, John, you used the terminology that Panuku are locking up seven properties in Henderson, which is ironic because it's an unlock category and they're supposed to be unlocking it. So are we down, the essence is, the, just, just for simplicity so we all understand, is it's because they are putting a cap and saying, almost a covenant on it and saying, you know, we'll sell it to you but you can only do this. Therefore that's a restriction. Is that the essence of it? Yep. yep. And the second thing is that can I comment on the Manson development in Glen Eden? I mean, is that a model that you think is damn good? Yeah, of course, it's an outstanding model. Ma Ma but Manson Foundation took a hit yeah. in the pocket to be that benevolent, and, and, and not many developers are. And they're going to do the same in yeah. Avondale. Great. Thank you very much. Well, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, receive your submission, and thank you for your attendance, both uh, John and Bill. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 The contrary, no. Kerry. Um, now, the next uh, um, presentation in the public. <laughs> Thank you.
Kia ora and thank you very much to Waipareira uh, and the contingent that attended today. Um,